right? And Slack mm-hmm. is that central login system. But when you, when he came up against you, it was very, you know Benioff. You're friendly yeah. with Benioff. <laughs> Benioff came at you so hard. He threw three or 400 engineers at Chatter. He took out full page Wall Street Journal ads. He tried to poach your people. He tried to make the product free. He made it personal against you after you would not sell to him. True or <laughs> false, David Sachs. I don't I don't think he made it personal, but uh it was definitely Did it a, feel a vic- personal? Um Did he hurt your no, feelings? No, 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 no. It he did. That's I understood what he was trying to do. That's your way of saying No, did. I mean if we had sold to Salesforce, like we we ended up so what I would say is, yeah, we got in like a very it was a very competitive situation. He didn't beat us. Um you he know failed. I, I what's that? He fell. Does that product even exist? Yeah. Um, it, it's sort of like a feed inside of the the CRM product. It, it didn't really succeed as a standalone collaboration product. And so we won that battle, but it definitely, I would say it scared us enough to sell to Microsoft um, because, you know, the... What did we he were offer about you? To, we were about to enter a new stage of competition. So here's what happened is he launched his product to kind of be a clone of Yammer inside of Salesforce, but he was initially charging $15 per seat. We were charging like five. And so they massively overpriced it and, and they event, and then they, they were on this like slippery slope where they kept lowering the price to compete better with us. And then finally they realized that they should just give the thing away for free as a strategic move. Um, and that was when we decided to sell to, to Microsoft is we didn't know, we, we knew we had a better product than chatter, but we didn't know how it would go if we were up against a free chatter. T- tell us I honestly, think, yeah. how much did he offer? What was the meeting like where he made you the offer? We, yeah, so Take they, us they to were the talk- room. Yeah, they, so <laughs> here's I'll, I'll tell you the backstory. I mean, this hasn't been public re- publicly revealed, but um, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> in, we in, service of the, in service of the all in podcast. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, David. Get us some ratings. <laughs> yeah, to try and, <laughs> in service is trying to get us from number three to number one on the charts. Um, no, you know, it's funny. We launched uh, Yammer at the TechCrunch 40 conference that Jason, as you know, you were the co-founder of. And Benioff was like a judge. He was a panelist and he was raving about it. And you could just, you know, from, from the moment we launched, he was raving about it. And you could see the light bulb go off with him. And... Um, he realized that like social was going to be, it was, you know, at the time, obviously social was big with consumer social networks, but he saw the potential of social or collaboration inside the enterprise. And so, yeah, I mean, like I think a year later or something, they were interested in buying the company for around $250 million. The big issue for them though, was that Benioff had a bunch of like engineers who wanted to build it in house. And so they, they, they actually, I, I don't know what would have happened if, um, if they, you know, didn't want to build it themselves, but ev- but basically they vetoed doing a deal. And so they ended up building Chatter and they threw the 300 engineers at it and they basically spun their wheels for a few years. And um, anyway, it turned out to be much better for us because we ended up selling the company for five times as much to Microsoft. Um, you know, if we had sold to Salesforce in like 2010, it would have been a much smaller deal. Um, but yeah, that I mean, he, he was very interested in it from the, from the get-go. All right, folks, there you have it. Breaking news in the background on what actually <laughs> happened. Congratulations to Stuart and the team. Yeah. Wait, I want to ask a question. Chamath oh. and Sachs, did you guys um, keep all of the shares you, you originally invested in um, to the exit here? Just to set the context for folks, you know, you, you invest in a company, it's a small startup, it's exiting for, for $30 billion. Yeah, did, for, did you hold just, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, for every share that I owned, half of it were half, no, uh, yeah, for uh, for of 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 a hundred shares that I owned, per every hundred that I owned, um, ten of them I sold at thirty eight, right at the direct listing. Um, I want to say forty of them I sold uh, in the mid twenties, and uh, the rest of it just got taken out at this price. So your dollar cost average to the, you know, whatever, high 30s, maybe 40 or something. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't uh, know my exact. I mean, I I, I I sold some and I still own some. So, um, you know, I definitely got my my beak wet from this acquisition. Oh, 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 um, but 
<laughs> but uh, no, but look, I, I, I think I probably sold, you know, more than half of them, you know, um, and that was a mistake. And, you know, one of my biggest learnings as an investor has just been to let your winners ride. You know, my biggest mistake as an investor has not been the losers. It's all, it's been selling the winners prematurely. Yeah, you my, did that with uh, Uber yeah. as well, David. Uh, and I sold some Uber before, but I kept a lot of my Uber, maybe most of it or half of it, I think. Anyway, Uber, it, Facebook. I mean, Facebook, you know, when they IPO'd, it was worth 50 billion. We all thought that was like unbelievable. I mean, because it was over a 50x return. But so um, what's the lesson for sex? Just never sell anything if you can help it. I uh, I sold Never all of my Facebook in 2014 and bought Amazon and Tesla. I think that you have to be able to sell for two reasons: liquidity and moral obligation. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that's an exaggeration. I mean you can never. It's 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 people need to be able to sell, but to the extent you can hold on, uh, just don't sell everything. You know, always you know, keep. Um, you know, yeah, keep, it, keep, keep it I mean, think it. about the people yeah. who were at Apple in the 80s or Microsoft in the 80s or Amazon in the 90s. A lot of those people got frustrated holding the shares for so long. Mm -hmm. And I think keeping at least 20% of your shares forever, you know, could be amazing. There was somebody told me <laughs> had never sold a single share of <laughs> and I don't know if that's a true Dude, story I, or not. I, I told you that. You can't be okay. leaking that information. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I didn't know Sirens. that was a leak. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> oh, okay. More breaking news. <laughs> Let's move to Alpha Let's move to Alpha Fold. <laughs> Let's must move credit to Alpha all Fold. in podcast. <laughs> oh my god! The same, we the same, may, the same may or may not be true with and his shares. You know what we should do is we should do a um, we should put beeps in there. Nick, I was told had never sold a share of, and then we just let everybody react to it. <laughs> this way, nobody knows what we're talking about. Well, I, I, I do know that has not sold a single share and it has only sold shares of to fund capital calls which is an incredible statement to fortitude and vision oh incredible lord incredible it's by the way by the way it's, it's not always worked out because he did the same with and those didn't go as well yeah i mean look you you have to diversify when when you've got all your eggs in one basket in one company obviously you have to sell some shares but um you know, one of the things I've just learned over the last 20 years is probably, you know, people ask me, what's your biggest regret or learning or whatever. It's just selling too early is like one of the biggest mistakes you can make. Um, look at PayPal. PayPal is now a $250 billion company. We sold it in 2002 for $1.5 billion. We thought that was a great deal at the time. And we sold it for less than 1% of what it's worth today. And the product's basically the same. You know, so it's just compounding. Sell is the lesson. Never sell. If it's a winner ride it you can pair well, okay right. hold on hold on i'm going to put a final nail this coffin then we're going to go to alpha fold there's a great <clears throat> quote by warren buffett which is um if you know what you're doing the best thing you can do is be as concentrated as possible nobody ever got rich in their seventh best idea and i think that that basically sums it up but you have to be in a position to have the ability to have that kind of portfolio allocation and i think that's